because he's super raspy. By the way, um, I'm getting sick again. I feel like I'm saying that all the time now. It's so weird. All right, we are officially live on YouTube. Um, just that all you know that uh, you're more than welcome to unmute your mic or talk in the chat here. Um, I know this is sort of like a presentation format, but you're totally welcome to just like, you know, chat along with me if you want while I'm demoing this. Um, so don't be afraid, but just know that it is going to be recorded on YouTube. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for, for coming to this, uh, to this demo. Um, the main purpose of today is just to show you, you know, pretty much two cans in its final state before launch. Um, I'm praying that everything uh, goes to plan here and that it works. <laughs> um, even though I did validate it last night, you never know with these type of things. Um, but yeah, and so um, the reason that I'm also, you know, we're having this demo is because um, while things can change um, after launch and new features can certainly be added, um, it is, uh, you know, just with smart contracts, it's always best to sort of get things added before launch because it's just easier that way. Smart contracts can be kind of hard to upgrade. Um, so that's why we're having this today. If anyone has any major suggestions, um, you know, please, uh, by all means, uh, you know, you know, speak up or, or talk in the chat here and, uh, you know, raise some ideas. But we have taken ideas from previous demos and implemented them, which I'm excited to get to, to, to all of you today. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Um, so the main purpose of Toucans is a couple of things. There's a, there's a couple of major things that Toucans does really well. One, it helps you fundraise. So what this means is you can sort of create a project. You can create your own token, which is like, um, you know, let's say Emerald token. And you can, you know, issue that custom token that you made for things like Flow token or USDC. And so you can raise in that certain token through funding rounds. Um, another thing Toucans does really well is, well, create your own custom token. So you completely own your token contract. And then, you know, the idea is that, you know, theoretically you could go to places like Increment Phi and, get, you know, spin up your own liquidity pool and, and, and farm and all that, you know, fancy, you know, DeFi terms. Um, it also, you know, you can manage a DAO and a multi-sig treasury. Um, and so these are the things that I'm going to be showing you, um, today. So let's just go ahead and connect our wallet. Uh, that's great. I'm using a, uh, local emulator. So, um, the transaction is going to go a lot quicker than it will on like mainnet or test net. But yeah, this is just a, a local emulator for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and generate a DAO. So if I click create DAO, I'm faced with some options here. Um, the DAO name is, let's just say like, uh, Emerald DAO. Now, the only change I want to make before launch, and I, I might say this a couple of times, but I do want the ability um, to specify the contract name. Yeah, so you can actually, oh wait, I think you, oh yeah, you actually, okay, so you can. However, I want to make it so that you can uh, add capital letters. Um, that was what I wanted to change. So like, I wanted you to be able to put like Emerald, like you can, you can make this whatever you want right now, but I do want to add capital letters. Um, okay, so we'll just put Emerald Alpha now. Then for the token name, and yeah, thanks Austin for that suggestion, by the way. Um, for the token name, you can make your own token name. So just like flow token is flow or USDC is, you know, USDC, I'm going to put Emerald here. And then for the logo, I'm going to select um, a logo on my computer. I don't know. Um, let's see. How do I get to where, where the, I don't know where I had my, my logos. Um. We'll just upload the Toucan's logo, even though the Toucan's logo is not going to actually look like this, but I'm just going to upload a random logo for now. Um, and then the banner image, um, I don't even know what to upload for the banner image. I don't think it really matters, though, so I'm just going to upload the Emerald Bot logo, <laughs> or the old, this is the Emerald Bot logo from, like, years ago. So we'll just upload that there, but it's, it's going to look so weird, but whatever. Just two files for the logo and the banner image. Um... So for the description, I'm just going to put a DAO for wonderful um, emerald people. And again, this is all just, you know, base configurations for our for our DAO or, you know, in other words, a project. For the website, I'm just going to put ecdao.org. For the Twitter, I can put emerald DAO. And for the Discord, um, I'm going to put emerald city. Um, and it actually auto fills in the other like the other parts of it for you. Um, so this is where you can specify what payment you want to receive in or what currency you want to receive payment in. So, for example, when you launch funding rounds, right, 
um, and you want the ability to raise in flow or USDC, you can select that right here. And um, just a quick note that once you select one, uh, you can't change it. So um, if you want to raise in flow token or you want to raise in USDC, um, you should select that now. So I'm just going to click flow because I know that that works. Um, you can also select a max supply for your token. So you can say, you know what? I don't want more than a million of my tokens to exist. Um, quick note on this, that because you do own your contract entirely, you have the ability to change this at a later point. This is just mainly used as like a safety net and also like a communication tool for your community to say, you know what? I'm going to tell my community I'm not going to mint more than a million. Um, and it will, it will have that requirement in the contract and won't let you mint more than a million. But again, because you do own it, you could technically change that number. So, uh, you know, community members shouldn't really use this as like a strict requirement. It's more of like a communication tool um, and just like current status of what the max supply is. Um, we can all specify an initial supply. So the initial supply of Emerald token that we want to be in our treasury. And I can also turn on mint tokens, which basically says, um, you know, like we want the ability to turn uh, minting tokens on. I think this is a good idea um, just in case you want to mint tokens later. Um, but, you know, we'll tell your community that you do want to mint tokens. Um, yeah, I agree, Austin. I, I, I noticed that throughout working on this project, there were a lot of times where I was like, wow, it'd be really nice if we could enforce some sort of like non upgrade ability here. Especially on variables like that have let, like pub let, max supply. Like, I feel like those things shouldn't be able to be changed. <clears throat> Actually, I don't, I don't think those can be changed, but you get the point, right? Like, I can just, like, remove, like, the... Yeah, exactly. You could upgrade it to VAR, and I'll, also I could just, like... The much worse problem is I could just, like, remove the requirement to even abide by the max supply. <clears throat> okay, so then th this is where we get to edit delay. Now, edit delay confuses some people. Um, but it, it actually is pretty straightforward. Edit delay is basically like the minimum amount of time um, before, like, so you sp you click on a length of which, um, oh God, how do I explain this? Um, okay, so let's say you let's say you go to launch a round, right? And your um, your edit delay is three days. That means at a minimum, your new funding round must start three days in the future. So it can't start like one day in the future because um, you have an you know edit delay on your project. So um, the reason this is here is because it helps your community develop trust in you to not just randomly start uh, funding cycles or edit funding cycles within a certain time frame. So um, the idea is that the longer the edit delay, the more trust your community can have in you as a project because they know that, for example, you won't edit your project uh, you know, a minute before it starts, or you won't edit your funding cycle a minute before it starts. Um, so I'm just going to select no delay just for the purposes of this demo, but you can use this edit delay, um, you know, as a really helpful tool for your community. All right. And then it gives you an overview and hopefully if everything goes well, it will, um, sign the transaction. So it should be done. And then in a couple of moments here, it should automatically bring us to our project page. I'm praying it does. Oh, nice. All right. Um, and as expected, the background logo looks terrible, but that's because I selected a circle for a banner image. But um, yeah, you get the point. And also, I think it will be very useful to like display what these look like before it's actually uploaded. That way, um, you know, you'll have the ability to like, you know, know if it looks bad or not. But also, the good news is that you can change these things later on anyway. All right, cool. So we can see that there are some basic, um, you know, stats about a project. It says that, well, first of all, my balance Emerald token is zero. Um, the max supply is a million, like we said. The circulating supply is 100 because remember we selected an initial supply of 100. So this is kind of like the amount that's like currently going around or the total supply. Um, and also it shows us total funding, which is zero flow because obviously no one's fund funded yet. Um, and you can see in our treasury, there is a hundred emerald. So super awesome. So the first thing we can do, and this is very basic, is, you know, one thing that's awesome about setting up a project is it sets up a donation page for you. 
So you uh, you have a place where users can go and donate to your project. So this is very simple. This isn't fundraising or converting tokens or whatever. This is literally just you know someone giving you funds and they're getting nothing in return. So if I click donate, this little disclaimer, and then there's the ability to fund the project uh, with either Flow or USDC. Um, and if I want to fund it in Flow, I can just fund it with 100 and say, um, you know, I love this project. And there's 100 Flow that's being sent in. You know, it sends it. You can go ahead and share it on Twitter or Discord. So if I share it on Twitter, it says, you know, I just donated Emerald Dow Dow with uh, 100 Flow. I'll change that. It should say like 100 Flow, not Flow 100. But you get the idea. Um, boom, and you could just tweet that out, which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tweet right now. But uh, yeah, or you could share it on Discord, which is pretty cool. Um, but the idea is that look, so now in the Treasury Wallet, there's 100 Flow because I just donated it, and on the activity board, it shows that someone donated 100 Flow, and it says I love this project, right? So pretty cool. So um, one thing I also do want to add uh, that's really minor is like show who donated, but I think actually. Maybe it's a better idea to not show that because I think sometimes anonymity, is that a word? An anonymity is uh, good in products like this. So yeah, that's basic donation. Yeah, that's true, Austin. Very true. And it, we do admit it in the event, so it would be super easy just to show it here. All right, so that is donation. Um, and also, yeah, like if we were to do that, I would want to make sure it was in, you know, like dot .fi names and all that. Okay. Yeah, that's very true, Austin. Good point. That's a great point. All right, so um, the cool thing about this board, by the way, is that you'll notice that throughout this demo, any actions that we take on this DAO will appear here so it is public for everybody and kind of gets to austin's point a little bit that you know we want to make these you know these events or these actions accessible to everyone in the community to know what's happening with it um so you'll see a lot more activities appear here in a second um we can also see the signers of this treasury which is just me in this case because uh i'm the owner of it so i'm the only signer so far any questions so far I'm going to pause for a couple minutes, um, or maybe just like 30 seconds or so, um, and then we'll get into like the real um, cool parts of the application. All right, it looks like we don't have any initial questions, but if some do appear, then I'll go ahead and answer those. All right, so now let's go to our dashboard. So this dashboard is only available to... Um, to the project admin so uh for you like it, it, whoever creates the project this is only available to you um but we wanted to make a really nice admin experience where you can view tons of information about your dao um, and also you know take some pretty cool actions so we can see the circulating supply the total funding we can see the uh recent events we can also see the funding rounds that are have been created there's no rounds yet um of course treasury wallet balances um who are the main funders so we can see actually that and wait you know what let me see if it's actually on the main page too i do want to show this um oh yes so on the main page this is what i also think is super cool you can show the main funders now the main funders are basically um like it's a circle or it's a circle graph where it'll show you all the funders of the project so you can see right now it's just this one and it says yeah this person has, has donated 100 the 100 is in flow token um, maybe I should make that more clear, but, uh, when a ton of people fund, you'll see on this graph, it'll get super cool. So I'll show you that in a second. And then we also have a graph for main holders. However, no one holds the token yet because we haven't given it out. Okay. So let's go ahead and make a funding round. So a funding round again is a way for you to say, um, 
you know, I want to give other people our custom Emerald token in exchange for tokens like Flow or USCC. So it's a way for you to fundraise on Flow. So we can set the duration for it. I'm going to say it's, it can go from, I don't know, here um, to here. And I'm going to, it's going to start at, in two minutes. Um, also, you have the ability to set an infinite funding round. So an infinite funding round means it starts in a certain day and then goes forever. Um, and then whenever you configure another one, it'll just like automatically stop or you can manually pause that cycle as well. Um, so I'm just for this demo, I'm just going to do a, 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 a probably what most people are going to do, which is just a uh, like a timed one. Um, you can set an infinite funding goal, which means that we, we you know, there's going to be no overflow and I'll explain overflow in a second. But this means that there's just going to be um, like you can raise infinite amounts of tokens um, or I can set a specific goal, which is, let's say, a thousand flow. And then once we hit the a thousand flow checkpoint, I can choose whether or not I want to allow overflow. Now, if I don't allow overflow, this means that we can't give out more than a thousand flow. However, if we do allow overflow, this means that any excess funds are going to go into this thing called overflow which is where users can actually send back their Emerald token in exchange for a percent of the overflow. And the way this is done is based on the percent of Emerald tokens you have out of the total supply. So let's say that I own 10% of the supply of Emerald tokens. I can send those Emerald tokens back in and claim 10% of the overflow. So it's a really cool way to say, you know what, if this project gets a lot of funding, I as a user can actually give back my Emerald token in exchange for Flow or USCC, whichever it is. So um, it's another incentive for users to donate to the project because, you know, it's like if the project does really well and it's fundraising, they can submit uh, back for some more tokens. All right. So now um, we can have a, a issuance right here. The issuance rate is just the amount of Emerald that would be given back for every one flow or USCC. And we can also set a reserve rate, which is the percent of, which is basically like the tax. So um, the amount of uh, flow or USDC that people send, some of it will get taxed, or sorry, some of the, uh, that's, that, that's wrong. It's the amount of Emerald tokens that will get taxed and kept in the treasury. So if the user donates, one flow and they're supposed to get you know 10 emerald tokens back um and the, and the reserve rate is 50 percent the user is actually only going to get five emerald tokens back and five will be kept in the treasury so we can set it to just like 25 percent or something all right um next uh, which i think is awesome is we allow you to set a requirement for the user to hold an nft to participate in your funding round so this was one f piece of feedback we got i think it was actually kelcoin that suggested this um, where you can select a certain NFT where, the, you know, again, the user has to have it. And this is going to support the entire NFT catalog. Um, however, for now, I'm just going to put uh, none. And then you can also set, um, you know, certain addresses to automatically distribute to when, um, you know, the funding run is happening. So um, when the user donates, I don't know, 10 flow, you can say, you know what, 10% of this is going to automatically go to this person or this person. So you can set the distribution right here. Um, but please note that Emerald City um, automatically takes 5% of all funds that are uh, raised during fundraising. So it takes nothing from donations, nothing from anything else. It just takes uh, money from funding rounds. Um, okay, so if we go ahead and launch, it runs the transaction. And I think I was talking for more than two minutes, so at this point it should just be ready. Um, oh, the reason is because we're on a local emulator. Um, and local emulators don't automatically advance the time. So I have to um, quickly run a transaction. I think this is what it is. I've done this so many times at this point. Um, did I do it right? I think so. So I'm just going to manually advance the time. And I think if I refresh, boom. All right, thank God. It wasn't an actual error. <laughs> um, we see an active funding run now. So um, what's really cool about this is, oh, and also, by the way, notice that on the main page, it automatically put a new funding cycle. So users can see a new funding cycle was configured, and we can also view information about that. I think I should probably refresh. Yeah, so it says active. It says $0 out of 1,000 flow was raised. This is the start date, end date, reserve rate, and issuance rate. Uh, it says two days left. 
uh, shows you the percentage of tokens that have been raised. And also, this, all this information is displayable here as well because it is the active round. So it is important information to display here. All right. So now I can go ahead and raise some tokens. So um, again, I'm just going to do it from this account because this account has a lot of flow in it. So let's fund this project. There's a little disclaimer. Um, and we can go ahead and fund. So let's say I want to fund with, um, I don't know, 900 flow. And the special message is, um, this project is really super awesome. And it shows you that the issuance rate is 10 emerald per uh, one flow funded. Um, you will receive uh, this amount because 75% of the minted tokens uh, after the tax. Remember, the tax is the reserve rate. All right. So we can go ahead and pay. And boom, again, we can put this on Twitter or whatever we want, um, but um, it automatically um, just uh, shows us that um, this amount of flow has been raised because uh, the reason it's not 900 is because member 5% went to the Emerald City Treasury. Um, this, it shows a purchase happened with the message. This product is really super awesome. Um, all, you know, some Emerald was kept in the Treasury wallet because of the reserve rate. Um, and this is from the um, the funding, the, the flow amount. And yeah, so now it shows a some progress bar. So pretty awesome. Um, and what I can show you is if I were to go ahead and donate some more, let's say 200 more, right, and pay. Now this should put us into overflow if everything is working correctly. I hope it does. <laughs> yes. So now you'll see that because we allowed overflow, um, this project says that it is now overfunded and I can claim some overflow. So because, again, there's 45 extra flow in here, I can go ahead and claim some of that flow back for the amount of Emerald tokens that I have. So um, I can go ahead and claim. It says you can claim up to 33 flow. And so if I want to, I can say, all right, I want to claim, I don't know, 30. And it says, all right, in order to claim this 30 flow back, you have to give 7,000 Emerald tokens, right? And I have, um, you know, a good, I have that amount. So I could claim that back if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but um, this option is available um, for you to claim back some tokens. And you can imagine that, you know, if, if, if other people participate in this round, let's say, I don't know, let's say the flow team donated a million flow, right? We'd all be jumping for joy. Then I could go ahead and claim a lot of that flow back. All right, so that is overflow and funding rounds. I hope that makes sense to all of you. Good so far, any questions? All right, cool. So the next part that I wanna show is, um, is the the uh, multi-sig treasury so as you all know there is a treasury wallet and um you, there's an ability to set up multi-sig actions around this treasury um so if i go to the multi-sig page it shows that once it loads so it shows that there's one signer and the threshold is one so the threshold is just the amount of the signers that have to sign something in order for it to go through um so the threshold is one and uh, it has to, you know, the max amount it can be is one because there's only one signer. But let's say I want to add multiple signers here. So let me go ahead and make a new account. Looks like I'm, I think I'm lagging a bit. But um, let me go ahead and make an account A. Oh, boom, it's already made. And here's the address. So I can go in, add a signer, put this address here, and click Submit Changes. Actually, and also let me make the, let me also make the threshold too. Okay, submit changes, approve. Oh, I th okay, I think there's an error with, with changing the threshold and signer in the same transaction. So what I'll do is I'll change the um, signer. Oh yeah, the reason that's an error, by the way, is because um, when you add a signer, it actually doesn't automatically get added. It becomes, a, um, it becomes an action to sign it. And the reason, I, I forgot about this. The reason is because um, two people have to sign this. I have to sign it because I'm a multi, I'm a signer of the treasury, but the other person that's assigned it 
So, okay, I signed it. But the other person that has to sign it is the account itself and the reason f the, the, the account that's getting added. And the reason is because we didn't want to make it so that, you know, you could just add anyone as a signer because then you could basically like spam accounts with, you know, and, and, you know, give people the ability to sign over a treasury when they don't even want to. So this gives you the ability to decide if you want to. So what we can do is we can go to the Emerald DAO page. And if we turn on notifications for this DAO, it will um, automatically, uh, if we refresh the page, go to pending action. So you can see there's a pending action now. And this signer sees that in the Emerald DAO project, um, it says it wants to add Jacob.find as a signer to the treasury. So if I go ahead and sign this message, it now um, will hopefully approve it. And this action will no longer exist. And I exist as a signer now. So super cool. So what we can do now is we can change the threshold to two. I can submit this change. It will become an action. I think I have to refresh the page, but it'll become an action to update the threshold. So it says update the threshold of signers needed to execute an action in the treasury to two. And if I, it only needs one signature right now because the threshold is only one. So if I go ahead and sign this, it will go through. And now the uh, threshold is two. All right, so that is just the multi-sig part. And that's just like, you know, adding signers. We could even remove a signer if we want, changing the threshold, all that fancy stuff. But why do we need to do this? And the reason is because of mint and withdraw. So mint and withdraw are the two major actions right now for multi-signing in a treasury the ability to mint new tokens and also withdraw tokens from the treasury. Also, I forgot to mention this overflow tab. Is there an option for penalties punishment if someone does something that is detrimental to the DAO? I guess the question is like, what is that? What does that um, you know mean? Like, what is what is detrimental to the DAO mean? Because like, for example, someone could could think that like that is like actions that they're taking are actually like good actions and that people just disagree with it. And it's kind of, it's kind of dangerous to like judge whether or not that's detrimental, you know? Oh, also really quick. I think I have an example CSV that I can upload here as an, just as a quick example. Let me see if I have it. Um, oh yeah, I do. Okay, let me find that really quick. Because it's actually pretty cool. Um, if I go to... And I see that um, Darth Nubius is here typing, so I'll, I'll wait for your response while I do this. Okay, um... Let me quickly configure this. Okay. Cool. Okay, so um, while I wait for Darth Nubis' question, I'll continue with... Um, oh, here we go. So, for example, if a multi-signer refuses to sign something causing delays or if someone signs an action, then refuses to do what they signed to do. Or if someone signed an action... Oh, I see. So that's, yeah. So right now, for the second piece of that is if someone signs an action and refuses to do what they signed to do, right now that's technically not really a problem because um, like when you sign something, um, it's it automatically does it. So you'll see in a second here that like um, when we go to mint, it'll make a multi-sign action. And if people sign it, it automatically goes through once it has enough uh, yeses or, or, or it doesn't go through if it has enough noes. Um, 
And with the first part, uh, if a multi-signer refuses to sign, the way that's treated on Toucans is is pretty similar to the like them just saying no. Um, it won't affect like the amount of yeses or 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 nos really. It's just that they're not voting, so it's it that's kind of treated as a no. So it's also not really that big of an issue. However, if it is an issue, you know you you know people could always spin up a, a multi sig action to remove that person as a signer. So in in this uh you know in this example, like let's say this person was just inactive, you know, I could start a, an action to remove this person as a signer. All right, so let's say I want to mint tokens to some people. Um, in the previous demo, the way this was done was I would paste an address here and then um, put an amount here that I want to mint. However, um, oh, and this also works pretty well because you can do stuff like this where I can say, all right, address, I want to give 10 to this person. And also, um, oh yeah, so you can add it. Then I can say, you know what, I also want to distribute, um, you know, uh, five to this person, right? But notice that what's actually super cool about this is it says, um, like it tells you up front whether or not that address has the vault set up. So um, unlike float, which uh, always causes errors if people don't have float collection set up. Uh, we wanted to tell people ahead of time whether or not there actually was a collection, so it's much easier for you from the admin perspective to know uh, if this is a problem. Um, and actually, in order to in order to set up this account, let me quickly do some like weird shenanigans. Where um, hold on one second. Um, I know that if I like the way that donation works, by the way, is it like behind the scenes, it automatically sets up a vault. So I think if I just donate one flow, it'll automatically set up. Oh, okay. Well, it's failing because I don't even have any flow in my account. Um, let me see. Is there a way for me to say create new account? Oh, wait. Oh, can I fund an account? Manage. Oh, fund. Nice. Save. If this works, I'd be very surprised. But I think it works. Um, oh, thanks, Austin. Bye. Um, so let me quickly donate one flow because this will, like, in the background, set up a vault for me. Okay, perfect. Let's go. That's awesome. So now if I go back to here, it should be fine. But um, the point of this was that there's a new option, bulk distribution, where you can actually upload a CSV. And I'll show you what that looks like. It looks like, um, you know, an account column and a tokens column. And you can uh, put, you know, your accounts and also, um, you know, amounts. And if I upload this, um, I think, does dragging work? Oh, no, it doesn't. I have to actually click on it. Hold on one sec. Um, if I go to my file, where is it? Um, product toucans, front end, uh, static, boom. Upload this and click add. It should. Oh, did I break something? Oh no, I must have broke something. Okay, well, I broke something. <laughs> but um, I will fix that. Um, that's annoying. But the idea is that when you upload the CSV and click add, it'll just automatically add the amounts here. So that will work, don't worry. Um, oh, that's actually true, sweet. You know what? Let's let's see if you were right. Let's see if you were right. Oh, good try. That's so weird. I had this working yesterday. Uh, something must be broken. But um, anyways, what I will do is I, I, I will just do this, where I'll just like manually say 5, and then for this address, I'll say 10, add, and I can go ahead and mint. So by the way, um, if, if I had uploaded the CSV, it would look exactly like this. So you get the idea. So then I'll click Mint, Approve, and it should automatically create an action for us. So if I go to my actions queue, it says mint a total of 15 emerald tokens to two total wallets. So if I click this little message symbol, it comes up with a whole list of what the distribution looks like. So it says five emerald, uh, or sorry, five emerald to this address and 10 emerald to this address. So I can go ahead and sign this. Approve, approve. All right. Um, but then also on this account, I should go to my pending actions and I should see that there is a, um, a batch mint request. 
and I can go ahead and sign this because remember the threshold is two. And if I sign that, refresh the page, boom, it goes through. And we should see on the main project page that if it did work, there should be like a, ba oh, there we go, boom, mint. And minus 15 emerald tokens. Pretty cool, right? So tokens were minted. And uh, if we were keeping track of balances here, you would see that like I got some flow back and the other account got some flow as well. All right, so that is batch minting. Um, and the other one is batch withdrawing. So if I want to, wow, I have 2,000 emerald in, my, in, in, this, uh, in this account and also 1,000 flow. Let's say I want to withdraw 1,000 flow to this account. And let's see their balance right now. This account currently has 299 flow. So let's see what happens when we withdraw all the flow. So let's go ahead and copy this address, um, paste it here, and say we want to withdraw 1,000 flow to this person. All right, let's just withdraw to this one person. Approve that. And uh, from this account, um, you know, from, from the... <laughs> From the from this signer, of course, you know this account's gonna say, "Heck yeah, you want to withdraw a thousand tokens to me? Let's do this." So this account's gonna happily sign this one, and then let's go back to the admin, and let's also sign it from this account. And we should see that hopefully, if everything worked, and we see the balance, woo, it worked, a thousand two hundred ninety nine flow. And if we go back to the treasury, we see there's only 101 flow left. And on top of that, um, it shows that a withdrawal happened. Oh, and also look at this. So now it shows you the main holders of Emerald Token too. So you can see these are the main funders. These are people who funded the project. Oh, this person's so much less. Look, just one flow, one tiny little sliver. But this holder... Um, these are the main holders. So these are the people that actually hold your token. So anyways, that was a very long demo, but I hope that this uh, helped you understand more about Toucans. And also one thing that I've been meaning to say is what I forgot about uh, Overflow is another point of Overflow is not only that users can claim back some of the funds, but you as the admin can actually um, use existing overflow for a future funding round so let's say i like a, a ton of extra flow tokens were donated right um i can start a new funding round and transfer that overflow into the new round and use it towards the goal so it's also helpful for admins too all right um, I don't see any questions, but overall, good reaction, bad reaction, project stinks, project's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, sweet, for the uh, fire. Oh, thanks, Dry Run. I really appreciate that. Um, is the multi-sig feature somewhere like asynchronous um, on-chain multi-sig? It's exactly like that, Dry Run. So I will show you. And also, all this code should be open source. Um, it is public. So let me go ahead and show you the code, actually. Um, where is it? Um, it's in toucans.cdc. And it's all the way at the bottom. So I'll give you like a very brief overview dry run. And then you can, if you want to, you can sort of see this yourself also. Um, there's a thing called a manager in the toucans.cdc. And basically what this means is there's a, there's a manager that holds a bunch of actions, right? So uh, like withdrawal, batch withdrawal, minting, batch minting, uh, update threshold, uh, add sign or remove signer. These are all actions, uh, multi-sign actions. And a multi-sign action it's just a resource that stores um, what the action is. So again, withdrawal, mint, all that. The signers, the votes, and the threshold. And you can call 
a, the decline or accept function with the account address, a message, and the message is, um, is, uh, um, oh, it doesn't show you, but the message, I'll actually give you like a, here, the message is, um, this, hold on. This is the message, mint five emerald tokens to jacob.find. So you're actually signing this message, okay? Um, so you sign the message, key IDs, signatures, and signature block, and then it calls this verify signature function with all this information. So verify signature right here. Um, and that is happening in Toucan's utils, which is basically just a long verify signature function that makes sure that that signature was actually signed by the intended address um, and also within the past few blocks. So you can't use like old signatures. I hope that helps. Um, and if you're curious, the multisig feature deserves a single tool page like safe multisig. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it'd be really cool to like extend this out. Um, that'd be awesome. But you know, the cool thing is that like because it is like I guess smart contracts. You know, this is available, and this and 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 manager is also available. So technically, you could do whatever you want. Um, and the action is any action that implements two transactions dot action, which is um, I guess, this. They just get intent and get title. So if you implement these two things, you can have an action. Um, however, for two can specifically, um, if we go to up here. Um, for Toucan specifically, there's only like a certain amount of things we do allow just because it is like there's so much like money involved. Um, we allow like withdrawing, batch withdrawing, but again, for your own manager, you could, you could add any action you want, you know. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming. I hope this was helpful. Um, does anyone have any feedback or suggestions? Or are we ready to launch? Also, Dry Run, I think um, in general, I, I know I, we were saying this, it feels like a year ago at this point, um, but I think it would be super cool to explore direct synergies between Increment Phi and this, because could you imagine, you know, could you imagine how cool it would be for DeFi on Flow if, People can make their token and then like automatically have a farm or or yield whatever. It'd be it'd be super slick. So definitely we'll be looking to increment five there. Um, thanks so much, FR Labs. Really appreciate that. Cool. Well, with that being said. Um, it is Friday, right? Happy Friday. TGIF. I mean, what better day than Friday? Um, hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Um, this was recorded. Yep, I'll, I'll post the YouTube link here in the announcements channel. Um, also, love that suggestion, Kelcoin. We should think about how to market this and launch it. Um, but yeah, enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Have an awesome time. Play some video games. Get active. Don't do any of that. Who cares? Just have fun. Payday is better than Friday. <laughs> well, I guess you got to have a good point there. All right. Peace, everyone. TGIF.